So, brief agenda for this remainder of lecture and next couple of lectures on this fundamental simulation concepts. Do remember these are all software independent. Whatever we are discussing now does not depend on what software you use. Whatever you simulate, even if you want to write your own simulation program, you have to follow these steps, whatever we discuss here. And maybe towards the end, we will maybe take a look at an example to see how we decompose a problem and what are the components of simulation. Maybe you uh, do hand simulation. Simulation does not need to be computers, you can simulate it manually, which we will all do it maybe next class. Let us wrap it up with some statistical analysis. We will start off with a simple example, the similar MM1 example. Uh, any of these systems can be modeled as a simple queuing model, single server queuing model, bank teller, ATM counter, ATM center, uh, petrol pumps, consumer, ticketing counter, anything. Essentially, all of it has a machine or a server and there is a queue for people to wait and paths arrive into the system or customers arrive to the for service. You can imagine that machine as a ATM machine, customers arrive, if queue is empty they quickly go, you go to the ATM, get your cash and leave the system and more people keep on using it because if you come and somebody is already in the ATM, you do not go and beat him up, you just patiently wait outside and uh, wait until he comes back, comes out. So, this is a simple queuing system and just 10 minutes back we saw that where we can simulate this kind of system with whatever machine has some distribution of the service times, arrival has some distribution of the uh, arrival times, then we can simulate this system. But now we are going to study how to do the simulation, how do you perform it. Okay. Before we get on to that, so what are the general intents of simulation and let us try to get a feel of what is a feel of what should happen. So, that when you build a model and run it, we should look at the result and say whether it is intuitively matching or not. Sometimes when you build a model and you see some result. Uh, your first instinct is yes that should be correct and let us maybe computer said so or uh, which is which is not right. Just looking at the numbers you can see whether uh, your intuition is satisfied or not. So, try to have some intuition of different things. For example, if you are using simulation to estimate the total production, how many parts are produced in the factory. Of course, more is better in that case. So, you want to produce more. We are estimating waiting times in queue or time average number in queue. We essentially want to remember that less is better. Sometimes you lose track of better does not always mean more. When you want to estimate proportion of time machine is busy or resource utilization, more is better. We do not want to customers or uh, uh, clerk sitting idle. When you want to estimate time in system, average, maximum whatever less is better. Um, and important thing to note here is they are all contradictory. If I want to reduce the waiting times in queue or the time spent in system, I want to reduce it, I essentially can increase the number of servers. Instead of one ATM machine, if it takes too long, I might put two, three ATM machines right next to each other. So, it, okay, you can process more customers. But then if I look at what is the proportion of time the machine is busy, I will find that that has reduced because I invested so much and the people there are hardly enough people. So, we so all these studies any system not necessarily simulation whatever you are studying it essentially come, comes down to trade offs that you want to achieve between multiple objectives. Try to use common sense, be consistent with your numbers. Sometimes you might just by accident mention the interval times as in hours and service times in minutes, then you will get completely arbitrary results. Slowly take a look at what is happening. So, be consistent with what you are doing. Be reasonable in your assumptions, round off and interpretations because the output you see unfortunately is just bunch of numbers. It might have some up to 6 or up to 10 decimal place accuracy. What is it? Up, more than 2 decimal places, it is even difficult to justify why we need it. So, 
use your common sense and this i cannot stress enough just based on the feedback from the past uh, experiences by fellow students you can say that time units is a common mistake people do please use uh, different units in different places careful to check the units and specifying the inputs even for data collecting even if two guys are going and collecting data you might follow different units do mention it some you might some may record let's say i ask someone if it go to bank and measure the interval times some may record it in minutes some may record it in seconds some may do it in milliseconds because their watch allowed them to calculate in milliseconds but you never you forget to write that it is milliseconds then when you put it all together you might it find gets all crazy especially for internal calculations which you'll all do for a lot of internal calculations figure out what is that actual time being used so just initial warning we'll be going over it again and again and you will get a hang of it by the end of the course